All right, so here we go with this review sheet here for assessment number four next week. And so the first question says to solve the quadratic equation by the quadratic formula. So there's a quadratic formula written there for you. To get it prepared, I had to take away 2x squared from both sides. So that puts me at 3x squared minus 4x plus 6 equals 0. So you can see my a, b, and c terms. My a is 3, my b is negative 4, and my c is um, 6. All right, so to figure out my discriminant, I need to um, go ahead. Sorry about that. So this is a 6 here. So my discriminant, remember my discriminant is this part of my quadratic formula, this little piece inside the radical. So to do that, I got to do b squared. So my discriminant is negative 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is 6. All right, so you can put that into Desmos or figure it out yourself. It's 16 minus. Let me see, um, 12 times 6, so that would be 72. So 16 minus 72 is um, negative 56, negative 56. So let me just make sure, yes, that's correct. All right, sorry. <laughs> and so my discriminant is negative 56. So that means that this has two imaginary solutions, no real solutions. So when I do my final quadratic formula, it's going to be negative b. So negative b would be the opposite of negative 4, so that'd be positive 4, plus or minus the square root of negative 56, over 2 times a. Remember, a was 3, so 2 times 3 is 6. So I'm going to get 4 plus or minus, now this 56. 56 um, divides by 4, and you get um, 14. 4 makes 2, whoopsie, whoopsie, whoopsie. What happens? All right, hang on. So 4 um, is 2 times 2, 14 is 2 times 7. So actually, you can bring out a 2. So I can write 2i, because i is the negative sign coming out, 2i radical 14 all over 6. Now, remember that um, if all three numbers here this one, this one, and this one all divide by something. If they all simplify, you should do that. So when I do that, I get, they all divide by 2, so I get 2 plus or minus 1i, so I'll just put i, radical 14, all over 3. And there's my solution right there. All right, on number 2. So number 2, we just want an in interpretation to remember all those little rules you did on your last test. When your discriminant is less than 0, you are going to have no real solutions. That's like what we just saw in number one. So if I were to graph this problem right here, you would see what would happen here is that it would not cross the x-axis. There would be no x-intercepts, all right? And that's not really the graph of number one, but it would be similar to that. Or it could be upside down, and it would just be upside down, but it would be so far below that it wouldn't touch the x-axis either. But number one is facing up because you notice you have a positive a value. All right. So um, with the second one, d is less than 0, or equal to 0. When the discriminant's equal to 0, that means the, this whole part, this whole discriminant right, part right here basically goes away. And so you have negative b over 2a. That's your only answer. So there's going to be one real solution. And that's called a double root. So if that happens to you, you're going to come down and touch the x-axis in one spot and go back up. Or if it was upside down, maybe you would find yourself coming from the bottom and touching and then going right back down again. Okay, either way. All right, and then the discriminant is greater than zero. That's your most normal situation, I guess you could say. So that's when you have two real solutions. And so that's when you see a parabola that is, you know, crossing the x-axis in two places. It could be both on one side or the other. Maybe it's, um, you know, over here, facing down, but whatever. It has two x-intercepts. All right, so number three. Solve the quadratic um, function by factoring. So if I'm going to factor, everything has to be together on the left-hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and add 6x to here. I'm going to take away 2. Right, so I get 2x squared plus 11x minus, or plus actually 14, equals 0. All right, so I have a 2x squared and no GCF, so I'm going to do 2x and x. Remember, we're not looking for any photo math answers here. We want you to do the work yourself. So to make 14, I need 7 and 2, maybe. So I can't put the 2 in the front, so I had to put 7 here and 2 there. And let's check it out. So 4x and 7x. Yep, 
that's 11x. So if I make them both positive, that works out. So the factors are 2x plus 7, and also x plus 2. Um, and then the solutions, I guess I should be equal to 0 here. The solutions are going to be negative 7 over 2 and also negative 2. Because remember, to get the solutions, you take each part. You take 2x plus 7, set it equal to 0, and you solve that. So you take away 7, take 2x equals negative 7, and you divide by 2, so you get negative 7 over 2. And then you would take x plus 2, you do the same thing, take away 2, and you get negative 2. Okay? All right. So number four, find the solutions to the systems of equations below um, using graphing. Make a graph in Desmos to help you. So you can literally type in these graphs, or these equations in Desmos like they are now. You don't really have to solve for y, but I'm just going to solve for y because I want you to know how to do that. So I'd have to add 8 here. So my first equation is negative 2x squared plus 17x plus 28. My second equation, I'm going to have to move that negative 6x to the other side. So I'd get 2y equals 6x minus 8 and divide everything by 2. So that ends up with 3x minus 4. All right, so now remember, I am looking for solutions. So I'm looking for um, places where these things intersect. Okay. All right, so let's see the first one. Sorry about that. So it is negative 2, 17, 28. 2, 17, 28. All right, so y equals, whoa, y equals negative 2x squared plus 17x and then plus 28. And I'll make sure that I did that right in a second. I know I probably messed up. Negative 2, 17, 28. Okay. All right, so the next one is um, going to be 3x minus 4. So you can just skip ahead if you want. y equals 3x minus 4. Now realize, you see, I see some graphs over here, but I'm going to have to zoom out. So I can press this minus key, or I can scroll out, and I want to know where these things intersect. I don't care about this touching the x-axis here. I care about where they intersect. So this intersects when x is negative 1.5. 815 and y is negative 9.445 and the other one is 8.815 and um, 22.445. All right, so those are going to be your solutions. Um, I feel like those might be a little bit... Nope, there they are. Okay, so that's correct. So there's your solutions um, that you would write in. All right, so let's see. Uh, next one. So let's see down here. Down here I already have pictures for you. I just probably should have put that one before <laughs> this one before that one. But anyway, um, you can see in this first picture there are no solutions, right? right? These two graphs don't intersect at all. Remember, we don't care about x-intercepts. We care about where they intersect each other. Here, these two intersect right here. So that would be at 4, negative 5. So we put the whole coordinate. Right, and then these two over here, I care about this x-intercept only because it's where they intersect each other. So that's 1, 0. And the other place they intersect each other is at negative 3, 4. So those are my two solutions. So realize you can have two solutions, one solution, or no solution. And you don't have to have a parabola on a line. Maybe it's two parabolas. You know, whatever the picture looks like. That's what you got. All right. So here, this is going to be another Desmos problem. Um, I'm going to need to enter these into a table. And I'm going to have to enter this equation right here. In for, to make Desmos give me an equation, give me a regression equation, a, a quadratic regression of best fit. All right, so I told you some directions there. I'm going to see if I can get Desmos, let me see if I can get it to like open up. Let me um, make this smaller, make that go away. That way I can still see my, my table there. All right, so let me get rid of these other ones. You're going to press the plus sign, press table, and then you're going to type in the x values. So we got 0, 0.5, and 1, and 1.5. All right, and then go over, go up, and you put in your 9, 18, 24, and 19. All right, oops, 24 and 19. 
and you might want to kind of like fix your graph a little bit. You notice here that my graph's a little zoomed out, so I'm going to zoom in right here and like try to do it so I can see my picture. Um, where is that other one? 1 1.5 and 19. Um, let me check that again. Yep, that looks good, 24.19. Oh, there it is, I see. All right, so I'm gonna go here to my um, settings right here. I'm gonna tell this thing, let's go from, my X values go from zero, and the biggest it gets is 1.5. So I'm gonna pick zero to two. Go by step of one. And then over here for my Ys, I'm gonna pick zero to 20, how about? And then go by one, just see what happens there. All right, now I can zoom out. Okay, that looks a little bit better. So I can see kind of a parabola shape. So remember on this line then, I start typing that equation, y sub one, do my little squiggly line, and then I do a, x sub one squared, so power two, and then plus bx, it's written on your test and it's also written on the review sheet, so bx one, and then plus c. All right, so there's that parabola, it looks like it fits pretty well, and there's my equation. So notice my equation right there, my A value is negative 14, my B value is 28.2, and my C value is 8.6. So that's what I'm gonna write in this equation right here. So that way when I do this, there's the equation right here of the parabola. Right? So you're gonna write that as a parabola equation. And then the next question asks you, what's the value of R squared? Well, R squared is right there on Desmos as well. So R squared is right here see it? Okay. They, uh, 0.9726, that's very good. Remember, close to 1. All right, so 0.97. And then I want to use the regression equation to find the height of the ball when the time is 2 seconds, so when x equals 2. So remember, the easiest way to do that, you can go along here and you can hold down this and you can see until you get when x is 2. So let's see, wrap around, x is 2, let's see, All right right there, two nine. So that's kind of easy to do. The other option is this. Go down here and type in x equals two. And then you can go and find the intersection right there. So when x is two, the answer is nine. So there's your answer. How high is the ball at two seconds? Nine feet high, tall, high, whatever you want to say. All right. So let's get on to the next piece. All right, this graph over on the left-hand side right here. Let's take a look. I see three x-intercepts. Um, let's see. What are the zeros or x-intercepts? All right, so here they are. Negative four, one, and five. So x equals negative four, one, and five. And if you want to write them as coordinates, you'd write negative four, zero. You'd write one, zero. And you'd also write five, zero if you needed to write them in ordered pairs. All right, next question part says, based on the zeros you found, what are the factors? So the factors would be x plus 4, x minus 1, and x minus 5. Now, on your test, you might see one that's like a fraction or something. So let's say we had a zero here. Let's say my zero was x equals, I don't know, 3 halves. Like, let's say I told you that that was one of the zeros. Then remember, the factor goes like this. 2x, because this 2 would come up here be 2x and it'd be minus 3, right? Let's say I told you the 0 was um, negative 3 fourths. So the factor that goes with that would be 4x plus 3. Right? So remember to do those with fractions as well. Um, let's see, increasing interval. So the increasing interval in this picture right here is this middle section right along there. And um, that's lasting from negative 2 to 3.2. So remember, with um, intervals of increase and decrease, you're using your x values. So from negative 2 to 3.2, that's the increasing interval. Now, the next part is going from 3.2 out to infinity. That is decreasing, so 3.2 to infinity. And the part in the back over here was also decreasing because it was had a negative slope to it. And so that was coming from negative infinity, so negative infinity to negative 2. So it doesn't matter what order you put them in, but um, whatever. All right, the end behavior. So remember, the end behavior is asking about the ends of the graph. Okay, so I see the left side's going up and the right side's going down. 
So when I look at that, I say to myself, when x is going to negative infinity, that's the left side. So that means the y value is going up. When um, x is going to positive infinity, that means the right side. And the y value is going down. Okay. All right. Let's see. So, yeah, good. Almost done. So, um, some things right here. What's the leading, the use of leading coefficient and the degree of the polynomial to identify its end behavior? So, when I look around in this first problem letter A, I notice it's x to the fourth and it has a positive. So, that means that um, x to the fourth is even. So, that means my graph acts the same on both ends. Either both goes up or both goes down. And since this is positive, I'm going to stick with both up. So, they both go up to positive infinity. And um, letter B, it says negative 2x to the third. That's my leading part. So normally with an odd power, the right side goes up and the left side goes down. But there's a negative in front of this. So that means I'm going to have to switch this around. Right side down, left side up. So left side, that's this, goes up. Right side, right side goes down. Okay. All right, last one with some names here. All right, so the degree of this first polynomial is 4, because that's the highest power. The next one has a degree of 2, and the last one has a degree of 3. Number of turns. So if you have a fourth power, you could have up to three turns. If you have a second power, you could have up to one turn. And third power is two turns. Remember, the turns is always one less than the degree. All right, possible number of x-intercepts. So there could be, if you have x to the fourth, you could have four x-intercepts. If you have x squared, you could have two x-intercepts. This is possible. You don't have to, but you possibly, because these are the number of solutions. And 3 would be 3. Okay, so those are how many x-intercepts. So when you see something with x to the third, what that means is it could cross the, the x-axis three times. It might not, but it could. All right, the name based on the degree. So these are things like we have written up here. Linear, quadratic, cubic, quartic, quintic. So fourth power is quartic. Right, um, second power is quadratic. So it kind of goes, you know, one, two, three, four, five, right? And down here, third power is cubic. And based on the number of terms, so if it's anything but one, two, or three, it's going to be just polynomial. But remember, monomial is one term, binomial is two terms, and trinomial is three terms. This guy up here is a trinomial. This one's a monomial. And the last one is a binomial. So you could call that thing, that y equals negative 6x to the third plus 4, you call it a cubic binomial. Okay? All right. And that is it. All right. Okay. No more. All right. I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.